your real work. This video will help you check off the requirements for WCAG 2.1 A and AA level accessibility. What does that even mean? You'll find out in one minute. You may have also heard of it as 508 compliance, which refers to the law to make the website accessible to everyone. Regardless of how you refer to it, you're in the right place. In fact, I'm not going to cover every single rules in this post. I intentionally omitted the rules that are rather common sense and nobody will challenge, like don't flash content more than three times in a second. That's a real rule in section G19 or something. I handpicked the ones that most of us can relate to and need to be actually mindful of. Let's get going. What's WCAG? The WCAG documentation explains how to make web content more accessible to people with disabilities. Web Content Accessibility Guideline or WCAG is developed through the W3C's process in cooperation with individuals and organizations around the world with a goal of providing a single shared standard for web content accessibility that meets the needs of individuals, organizations, and governments internationally. What's Section 508? Section 508 is the law that requires federal agencies to make their electronic and information technology accessible to people with disabilities. Who needs to be compliant with Section 508? Section 508 doesn't apply to federal agencies only. It also impacts company that does business with federal agencies. This includes private contractor, the financial industry, healthcare, many legal organizations, and others. So again, 508 is the law that requires businesses to be web accessible, and WCAG is the guidelines for making the web contents accessible. WCAG 2.1 2.0? 2.0 was originally published in 2008. 2.1 is an update in 2018. That's pretty recent. 2.1 doesn't cancel out or supersede 2.0, but adds 17 new success criteria onto the 61 existing ones. So it's best we conform with 2.1. What's the difference between A, AA, and AAA? Basically, the more A's you have, the more accessible it is. Although the higher the standards get, the more compromise you'll have to make with your visual designs due to the restrictions. There's an inevitable reason why sites like .gov or DMV look so stale and unfashioned. In this video, we will help you meet the AA level standards. This is because most organizations aim for A or AA, but AA is what requires more attention and knowledge. So that's why I'm here to make your life easy. Also note that if you meet AA, then you're also meeting the, uh, single A. All right, let's talk about poor first. Before we get into to the checklist, it's worth knowing about poor. Yes, you gotta make your website poor. Sounds strange, but poor stands for the four principles contained in WCAG to achieve accessibility. The reason this is important is because understanding the intent behind the guidelines will help you make smart decisions yourself when you aren't sure why and how you're following the guidelines. Here's what they mean. P for perceivable. The user should be able to identify contents or interface elements, whether through visuals, audio, or other senses. For example, you can't only use image instruction for say test or an application for. WebAIM.com says something that nails the point. User needs to be able to input the information into their brain so that they can process it. Indeed, as web designers, we need to make sure the users with different disabilities can all perceive the information so they can use the website the way most of us do. O for operable. This means we need to give users the ability to successfully control the interface. For example, you can't make an exclusive function that works only with a mouse because some people can't use or have access to mouse. People who do not have use of their vision may be able to manipulate a mouse just fine, but it doesn't do them much good because they can't see where to click on the screen. WebAIM says keyboard accessibility is one of the most important principles of web accessibility because content that is accessible to the keyboard is operable by the device that emulate keyboard functionality, no matter how radically different those devices are in appearance from standard keyboards. U for understandable. Let's say that web content is perceivable and operable by all kinds of users of all abilities, but it's not understandable to anybody. Is the web content accessible? Of course not. Your website can't confuse people how to use it. Users should be able to comprehend the contents, controls, and learn how to use it. For example, use a consistent navigation pattern throughout the site, or don't write mixing five languages. And finally, R for robust. Robust in this context means it's designed to function on all appropriate technologies. You can't design only for Mac users, only for Chrome users, or 
only for smartphone users. Despite the difference between users and the technology they use, they all expect the web to work. Now that you understood the principle and their grand intent, let's actually get into the checklist. Color contrast. Let's talk about color contrast first. Different colors have different contrast against each other. For example, blue on white is more legible than yellow on white. But if you have a blue background, then yellow will stand out more. As web designers, we must be mindful of such color contrast and the legibility for the users. The higher the contrast ratio is, the more visible they are. It's actually quite simple. There are two contrast ratios you must remember, and they are 4.5 and 3.0. 4.5 is the minimum required contrast ratio for text. Any text on your web content, any text on your web content except when the text is not significant to the user or they are pure decorative elements. 3.0 is the minimum required contrast ratio for graphic elements like icons, charts, progress bars. Simple, right? But here's one additional rule. Text that are large enough falls under 3.0 instead of 4.5. Large text is defined as font size 18 point or larger and 14 point bold or larger bold. I have four more bonus points I wanna share. Again, color contrast isn't just about what color you use for the element, but is relevant to the background color. So if you're using background color, don't forget to double check the ratio again. According to the section G1A3, focus and hover states for links must have a non-color designator. This typically means that you would add the underlying style to the link when it is hovered or tattooed. to. This is a level A requirement. Needless to say, the underlying contrast will also have to meet contrast ratio 3.0. Focus and hover state must also be distinguishable, meaning the state must add additional contrast distinction from the default state. Placeholders are often styled similar to disabled state. WCAG doesn't state anything about this, but if placeholder texts are significant for the users, it should meet the required contrast ratio. And finally, there's a tool called Stark that helps you easily test contrast ratio. Stark works with Sketch, Adobe XD and Figma, so you should be so you should definitely utilize this. Next is text spacing. This is WCAG 2.1 update from the 2.0, so if you haven't considered, then listen carefully. Text spacing refers to the space between characters, words, lines, and paragraph. Word spacing must be at least 16% of the font size, and letter spacing, also known as tracking, must be at least 12% of the font size. Paragraph spacing must be at least two times the font size, and line height or line spacing must be at least 1.5 times the font size. This text is now in accessible format. I have two additional notes. Some scripts or languages don't have properties like letter spacing or character spacing, and when they don't, the requirements are not applicable. And secondly, not every design tools have controls for all these properties, so make sure the format is defined in the CSS. For the text style, the CSS should look like this. Next is responsiveness. This is also WCAG 2.1. At screen width of 320 pixels or screen height of 240 pixels, the content needs to be available, meaning you can't lose information or functions. For example, on small screens, you can't make navigations or buttons disappear and become unavailable. Also at this screen size, users shouldn't have to scroll in more than one direction to consume content. For example, text should wrap within a single column or a row so that users don't have to scroll in both horizontal and vertical directions. Exception contents are maps and games, diagrams, data tables. Note that 320 by 240 resolution is equivalent to 1280 by 1024, but zoomed by 400%. It's not so much that users use resolution 320, but it's to help users when they zoom on common screen sizes. Another requirement is text should resize up to 200% and remain legible when using browser zoom. And lastly, don't restrict view and operation to a single view orientation unless a specific orientation is essential. Support both portrait and landscape. Next is about having clarity. Every page needs a helpful and clear title. I'm not saying every page needs a big heading text, but you must have some heading for the content in the page and perhaps an H1 tag in the code so it's programmatically identifiable. Every input requires a descriptive label or instruction. Note that the labels must also meet the legibility requirements we talked about. All non-text content requires an alt text. An alt text is an inserted attribute to tell the nature of the content. Many browsers display this in a tooltip when hover. Alt text is not required if the non-text content is a test or a catch-up or pure decorative content. Pure decorative. Oh,
picture. But emoji needs an alt text because they can be interpreted in different ways. Navigation control must stay consistent when repeated on multiple pages. Yes, yeah, stop shuffling your menu orders. If an input returns error and suggestions for correction are known, then provide it, unless it would jeopardize the security or purpose of the content. More than one way is available to locate a web page within a set of web pages. What? What? Yes, this is so that users don't have to dive in 20 clicks to get somewhere provide alternative ways. Exception is when it's a step in a process or like an error page. And lastly, requirements related to action. For legal, financial, data, we must allow ways for users to prevent errors by one of the three ways. The first way is to allow users to revert actions like delete, modify, and submit. Or the second way is allow auto validation before the above actions so they know they're about to mess up. Or the third way is allow way to review and confirm before the final action. So show a moto. That's it. Wow, was that quite a few? But don't stress yourself too much. Many websites and organizations that claim double A aren't perfectly accessible either. Part of the reason is because the WCAG guidelines are very specific, but the application is really case by case, and it's hard to diagnose the level of breach without the context. It's also that while the rules are clear, there are unclarity and questions around exceptions. In other words, I don't think it's the end of the world if you didn't check off everything on this list, it's also a lot of investment and work put in to meet these all. Instead, try to start on these one at a time and understand